Welcome to The Good Pod. Every Sunday, we delve into crucial Christian topics led by Dr. Barry Napier. Don't miss out on our thought-provoking discussions. By the way, have you checked out our website? ChristianDoctrine.com If you want to explore more about Bible theology ministries, start by diving into the articles under the ministry category. Our content is all about spreading the truth of Christian doctrine. We want everyone to see the incredible power of God's kingdom, just like it's said in Mark 9.1. Join us as we uncover the depth and beauty of these teachings every week. Politics refers to the activities of a country to do with its governance, and Christians have every right under God to be concerned and involved, especially as it is God who gives us the ways to do so. He always has. As believers, we know what God requires of people, and what he requires is our complete obedience to righteousness, something missing today throughout the world. So we will take a look at the topic. Politics and Christians. This podcast was originally written a few months before the UK was plunged into the mire of political voting in 2014, but the principles remain the same today, so I have amended the original article to produce this podcast. Many Christians, scared of the big three parties, were willing to give their vote to UKIP, just as many will vote for reform in a few weeks' time. Yet others, which gives me a grave doubt about their understanding, will vote for one of the three parties, even though their track record is foul and godless. Even non-Tory parties are founded on socialism or copy its ruinous tactics and policies. But standing above them all is the Labour Party, the worst possible party to vote for, because it is Marxist, and Marxism hates God and Christians. It would be just as bad as voting for Islam. So what should we do? Let us look at a few principles. We should ask ourselves a question. Is it acceptable and biblical to vote for the lesser evil? Should we vote willingly and with faith for those who are known to harm us and reject God? The answer should be obvious. If there is a choice between two systems and both are wicked, then we should not vote at all, whether as a spoiler vote or as a true choice. To vote in this way is to be complicit in the sins of the parties involved. Saying that the one we vote for is less evil is a very poor excuse. Does God say we may choose to perform a sin because it is less than another sin? What of the alleged judo Christian basis claimed by UKIP and now by Reform. As I have said many times before, the claims are usually words designed to capture the Christian vote. Until they are locked in actual policies, and properly defined and put into practice, they are meaningless claims. One has only to look at the way David Cameron urged Christians in 2014 to be strong in their faith and beliefs. But then he attacked and struck down those with uh, those with the uh, beliefs with fro- pro-gay laws. So he went against what he said to Christians. He referred to British values, which means homosexual and Islamic values. In the same way, UKIP and Reform can say what they like, but without genuine definitions prior to an election, their words carry no weight or meaning. In particular, if a party prior to election gives credit in any way at all to homosexuality and Islam, we have reason to be very concerned, because both hate God and Christians, and of course they plan our demise. Do I trust politicians? Personally, no I do not. Their track record and everything, from pro-gay to expenses fiddling, prevents me being so gullible. As my mother used to say, see what I do, not what I say. Any party can pull the wool over her eyes with soft words, but is their actions that prove their sincerity or worth? And this to me is the problem with the Tories right now. Their claims and statements are mainly excellent, 
but they failed to deliver, especially on matters vital to voters, illegal immigration and the, and the rapid growth in Islam and the constant enemy of homosexuality. In reality, these movements alone make all others' other aims weak and useless, the economy, the NHS and so on. All these depend on having a right attitude uh, to society. We must call for Judeo-Christian values, even though it's a weak version of biblical truth, but pointing in the right direction. Because such values have a proven use and worth, and are superior to any other values. More than that, such values are commanded of us by God. The worth of Islam, for example, is nil, because it is a charter for jihad and genocide. We can be thankful to God that most Muslims in the West, to this point, have not taken up arms, but it is only a matter of time, because they fear the jihadists and will comply with their demands in the end. The political parties allow this and commend it, inviting them into the country illegally and giving them everything by taking it off true citizens. Similarly, in biblical Christianity there is no harm, yet governments accept and promote what harms the general population. Not just Islam, but homosexuality homosexuality, which is now spreading its wings to show its many facets, from paedophilia to bestiality and trans, which is the epitome of harm to society. It is unnatural and healthy in the extreme, hateful of God, Christians and Scripture, evil towards children, anarchic by nature and immoral. Indeed, Romans 1 properly describes this wickedness. Yet parties insist on upholding what less than 1% illicitly want and reject and ignore the will of the voters, 99%, most of whom want something cleaner and better. So to vote for the main parties is to vote for our own demise, dictatorship by homosexuals, that is, only until Islam rules, and the dishonour of the Lord. There is also a huge financial cost to this blatant support for immorality as we pay in our taxes for treatments for AIDS amongst homosexuals, for their fake relationships and for the deaths of many millions worldwide who are infected. Therefore, nothing in homosexuality deserves legal recognition and should never ever be spoken of except in terms of distaste and removal from society. Parties also blindly follow the demands made by environmentalists who follow the unscientific ideologies of Greens and Pagans, uh, which began, by the way, with very early fascism and Marxism. All talk of saving the planet is spurious and without scientific merit. There is no undue global warming or unusual weather. And trying to stop climate change is, well, childish and impossible. It is also fascist, as is homosexuality and Islam. To see more on uh, more details on all this, see my book on gl the Global Green Agenda. The financial cost of being green is stupendous, badly reducing how we care for the elderly and the young, and raising our taxes enormously for no good reason. But in the eyes of the various parties, this is acceptable because it is a sideways method of increasing their own power base and income. Meanwhile, all costs go up greatly in support of green initiatives that actually do nothing. Added to this are the declared genocidal ideas put forward by many so-called leaders to reduce numbers of people on earth which is why death by fake vaccines for COVID was pushed onto a frightened population. Ask questions of the parties, demand real statistics and proof for what they do. Never believe the claims made by homosexuals, for they lie constantly and invent their own facts. Indeed, this is what Islam does as well. Demand a stop to Islamic immigration and immediate deportation of the ones who came here illegally. 
which includes also leaving the European Human Rights Court. Islam deserves no sympathy or protection. Stop paying out for all but the first child born. Stop supporting the immoral, whether white, black or yellow. See Islam for what it really is, opposing genuine values in life and hatred towards the West and anything biblical, and demand a proper and immediate response from MPs. Stop the sexualization, that is homosexualization, of our children in schools and colleges. Reverse pro-gay laws so that we again regain truth, decency and reality. We must earnestly utter imprecatory prayers against the parties because they are godless. We must pray against homosexuality, Islam and environmentalism. We must pray that God will rain down his anger upon the nation, but particularly on the unrighteous MPs who rule us without our wish or knowledge or consent, and who use the iron fist of the fascist EU to do so, though we are no longer members. There is so much Christians can do, but they must start by demanding truth. Uh, not emotional blackmail and intimidation. Voting for uh, one party to spoil another's chances is futile and ungodly. Voting for any party is ungodly if that party will harm us and defame God. A time is coming when all Christian involvement will be shunned and made illegal. This has already started. It has been made possible by weak Christians in the past who cared nothing about anything and whose beliefs and actions do not match their mouths and minds. Do not vote unless a party openly concedes to truth and morality and tell the parties before the election why you will not vote. Let them see the force of feeling. In reality, few Christians will do this, but those who do will receive honour from God. Think my words are pointless or unchristian? Then read your Bibles and listen to genuine men called to teach God's word, not those failures who think it best to be balanced. In God's economy there is no such balance, only his commands. We need not balance what we say if what we say is from God. A true preacher or teacher will declare God's word. He won't debate it or hone it to appear acceptable to wicked men. Theocracy is the only way of life, but of course this will never come about. Politics must be an extension of what God demands. When it moves away from God's word and commands, it becomes wicked and godless, not to be trusted or upheld. If you, as a professing believer, do not understand or accept this, then the next election is already lost to socialism, homosexuality and the Islamic screaming hordes. In King Saul's time, one man, or rather one youth, David, gave the victory to Israel, not because he was stronger, but because he believed God and obeyed his commands. We are approaching just such a time and place in history with the next election. Will you be a David or a weak soldier wishing to save his own life by giving in to the wicked ones? I'm not telling you who to vote for, but I definitely warn you, if you vote at all, not to vote for the openly socialistic Marxist Labour Party or any other party that is socialist. This is because socialism is godless and against God and Christians. And do not be tempted to vote for the lesser evil. Bear in mind that certain matters should be topmost in the minds of believers. I've already mentioned them. Homosexuality, that in fact is the biggest underlying problem we have. Islam, false environmentalism and the drive by Marxists to rule our lives with pseudo-health scares. Tell government you have had enough of being marginalised and persecuted for your faith. Everything else is secondary. More importantly, only God can bring about protection against the wicked movements that currently ruin lives. This is why personal repentance on a national level is the vote winner.
We are currently under judgment from the Lord. This is why repentance is the most powerful activity we can ever display. Then stand firmly in his holiness. Votes or no votes, the outcome rests entirely on Christians having true faith and practising God's will. Is it now too late? Has our laxity brought our own downfall? Well, his grace and mercy alone is the only real answer.